Welcome back, everybody, to game Time number two of your grand finals for the BTS Weekend Cup. This tournament started with four teams, and it's now down to two. Team Liquid defeated No Tide Hunter in a 2 1 back and forth struggle yesterday. They're currently leading this best out of 3 1 0. On the flip side, Fnatic EU had a crazy serious first BP, but they made it here today. Unfortunately, they're not off to a good start. They got hammered by Liquid, displayed a really early bat blink, like around the nine or 10 minute mark, which normally means that your team's in fantastic shape. You're watching the Fire BTS Weekend Cup. Back. I'm LD. I'm joined here today by Luminous. We're David and David. And Lumi, game two, game one was just that classic liquid combo. The Keeper of the Light, the Visage, plus one tri-lane worked beautifully. But you got to say, a lot of that was just poor execution by Fnatic. Uh, and I think you might actually be muted by mistake. Nope, you're here. Yeah, Fnatic has had a big opening. I muted myself, sorry. That's okay. Fnatic <laughs> had a big opening, but they never really took advantage of that opening. And Fluff's remain. team is not going to sit around and wait for you to win. They're going to seize every moment. And Five they they just remain. climbed over that hill during the time where they didn't have a mech. They didn't have Blink on Korok. And they just slugged and slugged and slugged. And they somehow survived. And that that was rest. Uh, rest was really history. When TC got big enough, when teammates, Korok got a, a quick Orchid, that was it as well. Also... Because of uh, LD previous fails, want to again wish everybody a happy Chinese New Year to to those that celebrate it. I know those of you guys don't celebrate it. That's okay too. But those you do celebrate it, uh, good job getting those red envelopes because that's income, guys. <laughs> GPM. Hey, I don't get any envelopes for New Year's. I feel like I've been gypped by my culture and my heritage. God damn it. Too bad, man. Too bad. I, all I get is potatoes because I'm Irish. Ba boom. Right. There's a mag in the pool. There's a bat in the pool. Let's see what Liquid's going to go for with this first pick. They go. Oh, there's a wisp. There's a freaking wisp. Liquid takes it right away. This is something Fnatic love to run. And something I haven't really seen Liquid play with too often, but it's Wisp. We know that basically nowhere will be safe once we get to that six minute mark. Uh, well, maybe the, the eight or nine minute mark if the Wisp has a decent time of it. I would like to call right Fluff and stuff. And this Radiant this call needs to have a beep involved. But playing with Fluff and stuff in the UCSD line, we went to the same team. And right when he hit level six with uh, Wisp, he was handling that hero. He said, F, this game is over. That was his exact words. Par no paraphrasing. That was the quote. Once this hero hits level six, Fluff is going to be extremely confident in terms of setting up ganks all over the map. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Oh, it looks like I got the score backwards. Oh, no. People, because <laughs> the team switched sides after. Oh, boy. Guys, it's actually Liquid Lady 1 0. Sorry about that. I, I'm not really used to hosting lobbies. I've mostly just been casting the lobbies that other people host. And the team switched at the last moment. So it is, in fact, Liquid Lady 1 0. What a day for me. Stream just randomly crashing. Lumi muted his microphone, but then me taking the blame for it. No red envelopes. It's been a tough. It's been a tough day. Uh, of course, it's been a wonderful weekend for us here, actually. But Liquid, what do they go for? Who's their combo here going to be with the Wisp? They also have Bulba, who loves to play Prophet uh, or Tinker. He's very well known for that. We've seen his Prophet, and that's a pretty potent combo. If you get Tinker and a Wisp plus one, your lanes are a bit weak. But if you get to the mid game, you are absolutely unstoppable. I completely agree. Uh, Fnatic's going to run that Batrider and Life Sealer this time here. Life Sealer, again, a hero that we've seen has a lot of success lately, but also teams have been exploiting ways to deal with him. Silence is one way to deal with it, and we're going to see Chaos Knight Wisp. We saw it yesterday from Fnatic themselves, and they really, really made a short work of it. I think this game we might see more of a traditional tri lane of Wisp, CK, and Visage. And it might not seem like a very powerful lane because Wisp is in the mix and he's not exactly that powerful. But all you got to do is set up that stun. And in fact, I take it back, it's probably going to be uh, IX Mike on the Wisp instead with Visage being uh, piloted by Fluff again. Chaos Knights. So CK Wisp and then we've got the Visage. I guess they're going to... I wonder what their lanes are going to be. We could even see maybe a... 
you always I feel like you always pick Visage to try lane, but in this game, just having the familiars to scout out for Wisp relocates could be very strong. So we could just see maybe the dual lane mid uh, CK Wisp. They're not on the Radiant side though, so it wouldn't be as strong. I guess it could be a defensive try lane. I'd really be surprised to see anything aggressive. Even though they have Visage, they have no AoE, they have a Wisp who needs a lot of levels, and they're up against very tanky survivable heroes, so probably a defensive try lane from Team Liquid, and th then they would need their two solos, which means if you're Fnatic, you're banning all the solos right now. Yeah, I'm get I'm, I'm betting money on a uh, defensive trialing, uh, simply because Wisps is a hero that needs to, a lot of pooling early on to stack this jungle to make sure you get a quick level 6. So, unless you're offensive trialing and you bank on getting about a billion kills, uh, Wisps most likely will be defensive uh, trialing. But, you know, again, this is Team Liquid, they might do something weird as well. We're going to see Undying, which is a hero that's uh, generally very, very powerful against any kind of trialing setup, because you get, if he gets a three-man decay, suddenly he becomes unkillable. And uh, the question is, will Team Liquid face head-on with the trialing, or will they kind of dodge and run a very, very safe defensive trialing? Yeah, let's see what's uh, what's going to be banned out here for Fnatic, uh, as well as TL, because if Fnatic, Fnatic's draft is a little bit more balanced. They have a support, they have a carry, they have a solo. So it's not as clear how you respond to their draft, but for TL, it's very obvious. If you're Fnatic, you just ban every solo, except for whatever ones uh, you want to get your hands on. And I wonder what Team Liquid will go for. Ten seconds uh, remaining. They, we, we've seen them go for profit. It could be something that Bulba plays in this Five game. Seconds Fnatic remaining. may also ban it, just not wanting to deal with it. The draft really taking their time with this first set of bans for the second time. stage of the draft. And Shadow Demon will be the choice. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing it might not be the profit because profit really makes sure that you it's going to be on that uh, safe uh, short lane. And Team Liquid try lane might go in that lane, so... Uh, Profit will kind of be a, a bad pick because it's going to be forced to go on the long lane and he's not too good there. So um, Puck's going to get banned out, which is a hero that I, I was eyeing out for uh, Team Liquid as Korok played a very, very good uh, Puck last game. Nyx is not there anymore, neither is Starks here, and now Magnus is gone. So there's a lot of good solos that just completely taking out of the pool. We might, we might go back in time a little bit and pick up something like a Windrunner, which we haven't seen for a long time. Beastmaster might be a decent pick here as well against a Batrider as well as Lifestealer. Uh, we'll have to see what, what the uh, two solo is for Team Liquid. Yeah, let's see what they go with. Fnatic banning out the solos as expected. We see the Mag ban, the, now the Puck ban, and what will the last one be? Uh, Korok's Windrunner is quite fearsome. It also gives them a nice amount of counter push. He's very evasive and hard to bring down. And really against Lifestealer is one of the most annoying heroes to play against. Actually, Liquid are the ones who are going to ban out the Tinker. And it's got to be those strong controllers for the solos then, since they banned out the Tinker. Uh, I guess they could still go the Prophet, but like you said, he's very weak in the 1v1 versus Bat. And they can't afford to go offensive tri lane, which makes it even harder for him. So we'll probably see something like the Windrunner, the Beastmaster. They are both available at this point. Yeah, I'm scratching my head right now to think what other kind of popular good solos. There's the Broodmother as well. Yeah, Broodmother's been uh, not there for a long time. I guess there's always Bounty Hunter. They, Let's not forget about Solo Mid Luna. We, we saw S4 did it yesterday for no time. That's definitely something available. They actually um, did run. They actually did run Broodmother yesterday, and what they what they basically did was they had so much. The goal was remaining. you know run the Broodmother. They actually ran it safe lane solo, and that just had a really aggressive tri lane. Five but you can remaining. kind of do it the reverse way where you have to. Nope, down. they're gonna go clock. So there you go, more control Rain and also vision with the rocket for Wisp Cast Knight. So vision between familiars and rocket, Team Liquid and and the orbs from the puck as well or for the Wisp as well. Team Liquid has it in spades. They have a lot of ways to scout for that CK Wisp combo. Yeah, the cog's going to be very annoying against Lifestealer as well as a Batrider when you try to fly and do something. Conversely, the cogs might actually trap your teammates in. I think we saw Axe might being trapped in yesterday with by, <laughs> by Boba's cogs. And against Undying, uh, you know, seconds. moving away from those zombies might be an issue. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but Five Team Liquid is looking remaining. extremely, Venomancer. extremely tanky. Venomancer is going to be picked up here Dia on Fnatic. Team. This is the year of the snake, so Fnatic... Uh, I'm saying synergy right now. Synergy for that Venomancer. It's going to start with a fair pair of, like, Tango, I think. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Fnatic, they, they, they're they very lacking on Disables now, and that is big trouble against Chaos Knight Wisp. If you don't win all your lanes, how are you dealing with this Chaos Knight in the mid-game? You have exactly one way, and that's Lasso. So the Venomancer pick, it's all about Ten lane dominance. Remain. They're almost certainly going to go tri-lane versus tri-lane, run the bat solo, and then pick Five up their final solo remain. here. It's a risky draft from Fnatic. If they lose this tri-lane, they lose the game. 
Reserve time. That's pretty much going to be the story of it. If they win it, then they still have a bit of a ways to go because they still have to worry about the relocate ganks if CK ever gets a decent start. So a lot of pressure on Fnatic here in the laning stage. Yeah, I mean, if they lose the trial lane, their solos have to win by a fair margin to actually make the game uh, even uh, a game because it's, it's ooh, Outworld Destroyer here, which it's a hero that's been uh, picked up and, and or our Devourer because like he's changing pick. his name. Uh, it's actually a very, very powerful pick here, considering that it will be able to disrupt two targets, Batrider and Life Sealer. And yesterday we saw how Wisp worked very well with Shadow Demon Disruption. It's the same story here. Wisp could still tether within the disruption, or Astro Imprisonment in this case, still could provide overcharge or any type of healing. You could disrupt your Wisp when he gets focused. One of the best way to kill Wisp, uh, kill the CK Wisp combo, is to actually kill Wisp himself. And, uh, well, Our Destroyer really shores up all the holes. The only issue with this lineup is that our destroyer is very weak against any type of ganks. And last time I checked, Batrider, Venomancer, Life Stealer, uh, and these are great gankers. Yeah, Fnatic goes for the Lone Druid as the final pick, and this is important for them because this is a hero that can win his lane. We're most likely going to see the Batrider, I want to say he'll actually go safe lane. Lone Druid matches up a lot better against OD, in my opinion, than Batrider does because Batrider's never going to find a kill. He can even have trouble controlling the runes. Uh, and also the OD pick, very crucial for Liquid because it's a hero that can farm an early Orchid. And that's something we've seen Korok go to time and again, especially up against Lifestealer. We're definitely going to see it from him. So Fnatic pick a lane dominator who can scale and puts a lot of pressure in the Lone Druid. That'll be played by Hani. So we're looking at an aggressive tri lane with... I want to say the Lone Druid mid just because it'll be a, a bit of a better matchup Ten versus OD. But it could be Lone Druid safe lane bat mid. It's just going to be hard for the bat rider to find any kills. Also, the nerd inside me is thinking of this mechanic interaction. When you're tether up with your teammate and Wisp gets a essence proc, does that work the way I think it works? Yeah, if the Wisp gains mana, then the, the hero that you're tethered to should Holy. as well. That could be that very strong. That's some sick stuff. I mean, just look at how essence, how good essence would be for this team, right? Fluff and stuff is going to be spamming uh, soul assumptions all day. The rocket is going to be spammed all day. And Wisp is going to be doing a lot of spamming through tether as well as spirit. So, uh, the aura is not to be underestimated in this particular line as well. It's obviously not the, what they picked it for, but it's just a, a good bonus in a sense. It looks like both teams going to be running in the opposite direction for once, and this make, may, makes me think that the uh, the tri lane is not going to be matched up against each other. So we'll see how it actually works out then. Once again, for everybody just tuning in, I am bad at Dota and bad at hosting lobbies. This is actually Team Liquid leading 1-0 right now. So sorry for any confusion. It's a best out of three. And here we go. On the side of Liquid, we have TC playing that Chaos Knight. IX Mike on the Wisp. We have Korok handling the OD. Should be going solo mid. Is rushing the early Tranquil Boots. Uh, most likely, we'll see him break that up. Potentially for a mechanism later on. Fluff and stuff going to be playing the Visage. At this point, his hero and Bulba on one of his favorites, the Clockwork. Now, Bulba actually told me he believes that Clockwork can beat Batrider 1v1. Really abusing the cogs to their full potential. So let's see if he gets that matchup, if he can demonstrate it here today. But it looks like he... It looks like he might actually. No, they're going offensive tri lane. It sounds believable because Cogs really makes makes that you never actually will die to Batrider, and you could actually basically trade level and trade farm, which is something that you could best hope for. And if you could trade evenly, I say you quote unquote beat Bat in that sense. Uh, but Korok is going to be somewhat difficult because the thing is there is a tri lane up on top, and is he? Oh, well, he sees that tri lane coming to him. Unfortunately, he has to give up that block on that mid lane and uh, Syllabar, which you expected to go on the. The mid lane against him is going to have that advantage. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a better matchup because even if you Astral the hero, you can't deal with the bear. The bear is still going to be auto attack you. Uh, so it gives you a way to last hit even with Astral spam and you don't lose damage. Uh, whereas Bat is an intelligence hero, of course. So he suffers a bit more from those imprisonments. So I think this is a smart adjustment. Also, it's a little bit harder to dive a, uh, a Bat Rider than it is a lone Druid. Although, I don't know if they were expecting an offensive tri lane, to be honest. And look at Liquid. They're pulling Fnatic's creeps. This is next level tri lane action. Actually, this is a very, very good way to make sure that you kill the tower very quickly. They know that this tri lane is meant to kill heroes. And when there's no heroes to kill, they got to get something else going, which is the tower kill. And it looks like they're going to tether right in. They see Trixie. Do they have Reality Rift? Uh -oh. Yes, they do. Fluff might be a little bit trouble, but Trixie in more trouble. But here comes the support of No Tail. And they're going to Trixie soon quite a bit of damage with that Firefly. Fluff is slowed up and stacked up. He's going to get some tether. Uh, MS from IX Mike, and that should be enough to get them out. So, so really close calls for the Radiant, but uh, worked out fine for them. Super good, super smart adjustment by Fnatic. They're throwing the Lifestyle 1v1 versus Clockwork, and 
Clockwork can't really do a whole lot against Life Stir. Sure, you're not going to die if you use the cogs properly, but Rage means you don't care about Battery Salt. You can man up and just trade blows with him very favorably. And Lone Druid should do pretty well against OD mid. I'd say it's a, an edge for the Lone Druid, and what well, we already see it, 6-5. to five. Now, granted, a lot of that comes from the supports roaming through mid, so we'll see if Korra can catch up now. But on paper, I think Fnatic Solos had the... The edge in both lanes and their tri lane is a bit actually quite a bit stronger tri lane bat and undying i mean this is not something that ck wisp can deal with a tri lane bat when he's especially when he's level three having access into all three his spells is very very potent the question is can the dire team get a quick kill against a bat rider when you have ck wisp combo you definitely can but the thing is there's so much impressive slow from the venomancer as well as you know the undying tombstone and all that stuff that you don't really want to dive especially with the wisp right just a zombie alone could easily get a kill on him so i'm not sure maybe they're waiting level two on the wisp as well as vice edge uh and they do have that too now so let's see if they're gonna make it go yeah as expected fanatic solos are dominating their lanes 12 and 7 on the life star 9 and 6 on the lone druid you compare that to the liquid we have od sitting two and five which is actually a lot of denies but still druid's getting more cs than him and has more denies and even bulb on the safe lane eight and two not doing quite as well and they have this observer behind the tower but they thought they were up against the solo hero they did expect that offensive try lane this observer doesn't help them too much and you don't want to get aggressive against undying unless you can like you said burst a hero down instantly and undying is a hero that's just very difficult to pull that off against yeah, Liquid just knows that the trialing's not working. They're going to just tether and try to perhaps gank mid, but it's completely seen the way that they're traveling. They do have... Do they have a smoke? No, they don't. I think they just do flat-out lane switch. Or at least they're coming up on the mid lane. Of course, Lone Druid completely expects it. And what is OD going to help you in terms of a gank? And looks like the backstab's going to come in from No Tail as well as Fly. And this oh. could turn out very, very badly. Fluff and stuff really in the front line of things. He does actually get... Oh, there's a Gale going to hit on IX Mike. IX Mike's going to run towards the left and it's going to tether away will that be enough and it looks like fluff trying to go for the deny they do get off the deny maybe even though they didn't need to but well <laughs> suddenly six heroes mid <laughs> what am i watching this game St standard dota really actually and now so now now what are the lanes batrider versus a keep cast knight he picked up a tp most likely we'll see bulba tp down to the bottom lane unfortunately for him he doesn't have boots yet he's gone for the early bottle he thought he was laning 1v1 and the boots, actually, are they on the courier? No, so he's going to be bootless against the Batrider. And I don't know if Clockwork, even if Bulba thinks that Clockwork can win that 1v1 matchup, when you don't even have boots, it gets a lot more difficult. He wasn't expecting to have to make this lane swap, but it looks like the team's going to be forced into it. The weakness of the Wisp, just so hard to find a good lane in the early game. I mean, I don't think it's that bad because you, boots or not, you're not running away from three, four stacks, right? So all he really needs is that cogs, which he does have access to. So I guess you should be okay, but having that boots, it's going to be safe. Oh. And it looks like they're going to go right in for error. Error. I mean, he could pop that rage and start attacking, which he will just do. He does have to re-level that rage. But here comes everybody else. Those blue balls going to be flying to your face. Here's going to be a TP from the Batrider. Trixie comes in very early. Boba in big trouble. Boba is going to be dead for sure. The question is, can they more get more kills? Uh, Fluff trapped in the middle between games. Gale zombies and a firefly, not exactly where they want to be. The lane switch of Team Liquid being fully punished because, well, TP is also available on Fnatic and they just have better level one or two heroes. Yeah, and Team Liquid was, uh, or rather Trixie, was much more prepared for that early rotation that we saw. Uh, the Hani Batrider being played last game. He immediately joins the fight. It's only five minutes in, and it's a, it was a really crucial rotation, and it saves the Lifestealer. They could have maybe dive, but Liquid, that's a blunder. You don't, you should not tower dive that far when you have a solo like Batrider who could easily TP into the fight. Just overextend. They get picked off. They got a little bit greedy there. They do pay for it. And normally when we see this, the trade-off for Liquid is Korok's crushing mid. He's been beating almost everybody mid on OD. But Lone Druid's so much harder to kill, the, he's so much harder to win the lane against than any other hero. Again, Astral Imprisonment doesn't really help you that much at all. Yeah, you can see that he's actually not putting, well, I mean, he, he is maxing it because that's a good spell to have, but he's actually putting more points in the Essence Aura now, realizing that the uh, Astral Imprisonment is going to not help too much. And meanwhile, on the top lane, it looks like Fnatic wants to put a little bit of pressure on that tower. They should be able to knock it down eventually, but uh, right now, the more important thing is that Wisp is not getting any EXP. Uh, Ike's Mike's always playing the fifth, and that's going to be difficult for a Wisp because he needs a lot of gold to get things like mech, and he needs a lot of levels to get that sixth, and so far he's getting none of it. He's playing, he, currently he's in the nine roll, which means that he doesn't get to see any creeps for like at least ten minutes into the game, which is kind of what we're looking at right now. 
Uh, like, he's very level dependent. TC is only level 4 as well. Normally your CK, if you're playing defensive Charlie and getting free farm, or at least not being pressured, you'd easily be level 5 and a half or so at this point. So he's built a bit behind. Korok's not doing that well. Bulba was forced to TP bottom. All the running off oh, top lane. Huge action breaks out. Fly is going to drop as the trade for TC. Uh, and now they're going on to IX Mike. The tube zone is here. IX Mike is going to fall. And the Wisp is dead. Bulba even joins the fight. He's going to get caught in his own cogs under the tower. The zombies come in from behind. They bring him down. Fluff and stuff. Throws out the nuke. He may get the turnaround kill here. Oh, not going to in the end. And Fnatic just needs to remove this tower aggro. They will do so now. Chaos Knight TP's back in. He's going to be too late. 7 to 1, and we're only 7 minutes in. I don't Again. think there can possibly be a worse start. Again, for anybody that just joined in, TC's gonna get Gailed on. Looks like he's gonna go well, down to about half HP. He's gonna try to fly his way out. That tower is just not doing enough. Fluff and stuff TP's in right now, trying to get something going. There's a soul assumption. Gonna barely get the kill. And no tell, perhaps in a little bit of trouble as well. The rocket providing a little bit of sight as well as damage. Fluff and stuff will not have mana for a second soul assumption, and that should be it for that engagement. I gotta just say, that previous engagement just shows you how desperate Team Liquid is. They're fighting against Korok. a Gale and a Tombstone. Korok just used Imprisonment on Hani, and now he might pay for it with his life, but the bear is actually oh, being blocked by his hair a little bit. That was a close call for Korok there. And you really have to be careful of when you use that Imprisonment now that Hani has hit level six, or level five, and has, has access to those Entangling Claws. Yeah, Team Liquid is just in big trouble because you don't ever want to fight directly against a Venomaster Gale and a Tombstone, and they dove right in, hopefully, or hoping they could have get something, but honestly against a very, very farm life we as well as a high level thing. They, they're not going to do it. Here we go. They're going to try to go on the milling against Hani. Hani very, very slow despite his tankiness right now. He is going to be... No, I think Hookshot comes in right there as well, but here comes Chrissy Batrider. He does drop off the last one, but immediately disrupt it, but the Firefly damage already spilling all over the place. There's a great knockback here against Boba, and Boba should be dead. No, he's going to be fine, and I think TC with Ix Mike coming back in finally gets that return kill they need. Looks like they want to keep on chasing, though. Honey is low, but here comes No-Tail dropping that Tombstone. That that should be enough to drive oh, everybody back. That decay. He's so slow right now, though. He's trying to get in range here. Just needs one more decay. He won't get it off. Liquid, four-man mid. Actually, it's five heroes mid. And, well, it works, I guess. They get some kills, but meanwhile, Lifestyle is getting up to a lot of farm top lane. And the one issue with Wisp is if you have a really horrible start in your lanes, even when she hits six, she can just die instantly to a lot of heroes like that Lifestyle can just burst her down while in rage form. And Chaos Knight, if he doesn't get the stun off quickly, it may not matter. Gale's going to whiff mid lane. So with a start this bad for IX Mike, even when he hits six, it, there's no urn up on him. There's no bottle. There's no boots. He's so squishy that it's still going to be a little while before Liquid can even start to force fights. Yeah, I think Liquid, even when their Wisp turns level 6, won't be forcing fights. I think mostly they will be using it as a plus 2 counter gank anytime that Fnatic is uh, smoke ganking. Fnatic has shown that they love to smoke gank. In fact, there's going to be some action up on top of here. Life Soda gets the last hit on the tower that TC trying to deny. TC's losing HP so rapidly, and now the zombies stack up on IX Mike. IX Mike, no tether out for a, a kind of yeah, a wasn't cool teammate. Out there. Yep, and that's going to be two free kills, a tier 1 tower, and these birds are on their run for as well. And I think Fnatic could quit pressure on, on tier 2, because right now Team Liquid is in no position to take a fight. Yeah, mid lane. The Astral Imprisonments continue, but OD, you pick him to just crush somebody mid lane. You don't really pick him to trade, you certainly don't pick him to fall behind and farm. And the majority of this is just the hero matchup, it's just not a matchup that OD can do well against. Uh, especially when the supports came through his lane early in the game to rotate towards bottom. So I gotta say, Fnatic was really smart with the way they laid this. And we do see that Wisp, well, maybe the game's over when you hit 6, but you gotta get there first. And IX Mike, we're 10 minutes in, he's only level 4, he has boots. He shouldn't be a solo kill here for the, the lifestyle, but any Radiant's plus 1 can easily kill him. And they're just constantly keeping pressure up. Now they're gonna go star, are they going mid? It looks like they are, double damage on bat. And I don't really know that Liquid can defend their towers right now. In fact, I'm well, they're gonna they try. Can, they can't. Yeah. Clockwork's gonna try his best to spam rockets, but I mean, it's a free tower for the taking trick. He's burning the trees from behind. He sees Korok. Korok is basically dead. And yep, no, he self disrupt, and that should come by the to buy him a couple seconds for the team. So he's not gonna have any assistance from his teammates, and that tower is also gonna be dead. Uh, Armlet. Armlet already on era at 11 minutes into the game. Jeez, yeah, this is just not a not a good good news for the uh, Dire team. And uh, Eris, again, going for this uh, build that we don't see too often anymore. The treads into Armlet build. Now we're more accustomed to seeing phase 
and uh, drums. But we're, when you're this ahead, it doesn't matter what build you go for. It's just like the level advantage is going to be enough. As yeah. long as your hero they, has some items. They have open wounds. They have Gale, Sticky, Napalm, uh, as well as as well as well Lasso and Flame Break. So I feel like they have a little bit more control. And also, if you look at Liquid's lineup, they're not really that mobile within the fight. Sure, they've got the global strategy at, or the global lineup. And sure, Clockwork is hooked. But aside from that, Visage doesn't have any mobility skills. OD doesn't. Chaos Knight, only when he's tethered to the Wisp, does he really have a lot of movement speed. And... You know, the Wisp has Tether, so that's their one main mobility skill. So I feel like this is an okay build in this particular game. And he's also nearly impossible to burst down. Treads just make you a little bit harder to burst. And if you can't burst this hero, well, you're not winning the fight. Because right now your Chaos Knight has really no farm. He's got boots and a stick. And 1,100 gold. That's it. Yeah, I always say this when I see a Chaos Knight in a game. Is that he's a very, very good hero when you get steam rolling. But if you're expected to initiate and you die every single fight, your item will never actually pro progress and you'll become mostly like a useless hero. It's, it's strange to say that Chaos Knight becomes a mostly useless hero, but he really becomes like that if he keeps dying as he initiating. And he's 1 in 3 so far, so not having Trixie. a good start. Trixie's, yeah, Trixie's hasted with, with a blink dagger right now. Here we go, top. Well, they're gonna try to. F he's gonna oh. find somebody. Ooh, quick TP out. Hook that bottom lane onto Hani. He gets caught. But Bulba hooks in only to run. The Undying is here. Now he's caught in with the bear and entangled. Bulba can't be happy about the RNG gods right now. And the chase is on. The Orb of Venom is a really nice pickup and nice body block by Hani. Using this hero to slow down Bulba so that he can get off those last auto attacks. Now TC will use his ult, but it's only a level 1 ult. The Astral Prism followed by the ult from the Undying. It may in fact be enough still. There's the Entangle on TC. He'll pick up the kill, but Hani's melting quickly. He needs to block Korok away with this bear. He can't do it. Korok's manning up. Trying to orb him down. Gets Entangle, but one more orb cast. Gets the double kill. If Korok wasn't there, that would have been a disaster. Instead, a good fight. And Bat was all the way top. Imagine if he had been bottom with that haste and blink. That would have gone completely differently. So Liquid just getting out of the nick of time top and then turning the fight around bottom. Good good engagement from them. Yeah, but they're going to lose the top tier 2 tower for that. Uh, or at least sustain a lot of damage. Ice Might did find level 6 in the jungle. What he basically did is basically keep stacking that high level camp. Where the Furbok champion standing right there. And he used his Wisp to, uh, Spirits to farm it. And that did put him level 6, and it looks like he's going to initiate right now against Era. Era does rage. They got to go and fly. They do see fly. Fly is going to get focused. Can you actually bring him down? They do. So this is the power of Wisp. Even when you're down behind like this, he's going for the hook. Boba hits it. Where is he cog? He does cog the bat rider. Gets flying away. But Boba, just a just a sign. Every single time he hooks in, he just have to get back out because he just dies too quickly. No tail also dies, but here comes Trixie blinking in. He just can't get enough. I asked Mike back in the fight, full HP, full mana, buff is dead, and I think this is a sign to retreat for Team Liquid. Not too bad of a fight considering that they did get uh, Fly as well as Undying in exchange for two heroes. When you could trade evenly when you're down behind like this, well, it's not the best, but you're getting yeah, some kills. Tra trading definitely favors Liquid. They have CK Wisp, they have the better comeback lineup certainly, and when you're behind, Trading is always generally going to be a, a good thing, always generally. It's it's always going to be better than the alternative, which is just slowly losing by a war of attrition. So I yeah. like the fact that Liquid's trading, even though we do see the gold graph and experience graph increasing. CK is getting some levels, Wisp is getting some. Would like to see them pick some more favorable fights, but the problem is, with, with Fnatic constantly pressuring their towers, it's just... It's hard to actually get out on the map, get a lot of wards up. The Familiars have been scouting a decent amount, and here comes the Blink Bat. Catches out TC. He's tethered, but he's being pulled back. The Gale will hit him as well. He doesn't have his ultimate for 10 seconds. Life Stealer charges in. This should be the death of TC. He's pushed back into the flames, into his doom. And I gotta say, this Trixie Batrider is feeling so much more effective than the Hani Batrider last game. And Hani seems a lot more comfortable in the Lone Druid. I like the way they've designed the heroes a lot better, and now the Tier, tier 2 bottom is being pressured quite a bit. Yep, and uh, tier 2 mid is also in big trouble as well. When you, Once you lose these outer towers, the Roshan advantage that Dyer has is no longer there. You can see that uh, Korok still trying to farm up on top. Here's the issue with Outworld Devourer, is that if you don't get enough farm in lane, which he did not against the Lone Druid, you're actually not going to contribute anything to your team. And you actually become a, a kind of a dead weight for your team as well, because you're expected to protect him. He doesn't contribute too much, and he's very easily to gank. He might have that four stat, but a bat rider with a blink dagger will always find him and hunt him down. He's actually, so he's actually kind of like a Templar assassin in the sense that you pick him to dominate the lane. TI is a bit better at setting up solo kills later on in the game, but it's a similar concept. You pick the hero to dominate the lane, and then you start to snowball from there. And because of the matchup, he wasn't able to do it. Yep. 
And they do see him up on the top lane as well. Look at these wards. One thing that Fnatic has been very impressive throughout all these games is that they're warding very deep when they need to be. And uh, they see Korok right now, so if Batrider wants to get over there, they can get the kill. Now, one thing that they do have to worry about is that if you're ganking the Dire team, you're ganking whoever you're ganking plus a CK whip. Because uh, IX Mike is, should be always next to the CK, which he is right now. They want TC, and will they get him? IX Mike can relocate back out, which they will do so right there. There you go, they're back home safely. The question is, will they actually get backup support? You can see that. Well, where the hell's Team Liquid? No, nope. <laughs> I think IX Mike's gonna take one for see the team. Mike. IX Mike, well, you can see that Fluff is hiding there, trying to give him that tether out, but <laughs> he just explodes when he comes back. Yeah, that's that one isn't happening. He didn't even have time to really heal up fully in the fountain there. Would not have mattered, most likely, because Trixie still has that blink as well. And they're going to get the tier 2. That's the second to last outer tower. So now getting out on the map to get vision gets even harder. Sure, you have Rocket, you have Familiars, but that's not really enough. You really want those aggressive wards in the enemy jungle. Uh, or in your own jungle, for that matter, because Fnatic may just park themselves in the enemy jungle the rest of the game. I mean, why not? They could, you know, farm all over Fluff's, or excuse me, Team Liquid's jungle, and uh, earn a lot more gold there instead of traveling to their own jungle. Meanwhile, keeping the farm away from Team Liquid. Team Liquid can't even get too far out from their own towers because they don't have any kind of uh, outer towers anymore. You see that TC is really the only one that could jump out, and even so, he gets initiated on all day long. I guess one of the best way to gank a Wisp CK team is to actually gank the CK, because, well, there's no plus one if CK is getting ganked. Yeah, and Fnatic's carries are very tanky. Lone Druid is a great choice against CK Wisp if you need a solo, because he's very hard to kill. Once he gets into his ultimate form, look at his armor. 18 armor, and he has not even cast uh, Battle Cry, so his armor is going to get even better in these fights, and it makes him almost impossible to kill, even in the early game. Like, even if you have a better start, Lone Druid's one of those heroes we saw. They tried to gank him mid. Granted, Wisp was in six. He just runs back to the tower, and the fight turns around. So, Fnatic, these heroes are, with a good start, not easy targets for CK Wisp, but Liquid, they're going to look for the trade, and OD is great at muscling down Roshan quickly. I don't know if they can do this in time, though. Here comes the rotation. Yeah, it's just a very, very good attempt, but I'm not sure they just have the damage to do so, especially against a Blink Dagger Batrider. Here comes a bat, they see it coming. What can you do about it? That's the question. Team's gonna get dragged on the high ground. Ix might get initiated. That's the worst person to lose early. Yep, that's a double kill immediately. They do get the Aegis, though, and Outworld Devourer picks it up, and I think they can even make it back safely. I guess a Wisp and a Clock for an Aegis on your Devourer, maybe maybe it's worth it? Yeah, I'm not sure, because they lost the tier 2. Zombies are still chasing. They're still on the hunt. Oh, Fluff is gonna be okay. But meanwhile, I, I don't think it's- Well, they, this would be worth it if they kill up Hani, which they should be able to. Hani should have known to back there. There were still three heroes alive. Really overextended. Not sure what Hani is expecting when he's pushing the Brax like this and, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was smart to split push. I don't mind that choice because they have the bat to disrupt the team fight already at Roche. And this way you try and draw Liquid back so they don't finish it. I don't mind the choice to split push, but you should have he should have backed sooner. He just got a little bit over eager. Gives up the kill. Still, Liquid completely penned into their own base. How do you leave the base now? The old, there's only one way, and that's a smoke, and that's what they're going for. <laughs> when things are going wrong. But this is very dangerous. It's a blind smoke with basically zero vision. I mean, hey, if they see one, they will get the kill. Well, era. Ooh. Smoke era, over. Era. Or see me, Fly's gonna get initiated on. There's a reality. Where's the tether? Re -tether. There's a retether right there. They're gonna kill Fly immediately. Tombstone's gotta be the next target, but there's just too many heroes in all directions. I do believe Fnatic's gonna win yet another team fight. Yep, two people or one person's dead so far. Boba being chased by a whole bunch of zombies. Fluff is on the run, and Batrider's laying uh, stacks after stacks. He has Blink next to his four staff now. So, ooh, a big snipe here to take away the Aegis. He does not have any more mana for that lasso. It looks like Fluff is just fight this. Yeah, yeah but they're, they're, gonna... they're now pressuring the base. Remember, they were fighting with Outlaw Druid, who just respawns now. It's going to rejoin the fight. That was a 4v5, and they just got absolutely crushed, and they got the initiation. But the issue is they initiated upon Venomancer, who, as soon as he pops his ult, I mean, that's his contribution to the fight, so it doesn't really matter if you kill him. they got to be able to kill off a hero like the Bat Rider, the Life Stealer, and these are just not easy kills. And now Life Stealer has a Deso. Again, the arch nemesis of the Wisp is burst damage if she's underleveled, and right now they have all the bursts they need. If Lifesteal jumps on her and she can't tether away, she's dead. She may even die trying to tether away just to that amount of burst. Yep. Also, for any Team Liquid fans out there, don't worry. Uh, they are not down one game. In fact, they're up one game. The the counter was a, a honest mistake. So they're up 1-0 <laughs> right now. 
And uh, it, it might look like it's going to be 1-1, one, one, but we'll see. I can add to my many titles. I'm not just David Overlay Gorman now. I'm David. Can't use the freaking score counter button, whatever, Gorman. So... Yeah, it is a 1-0 lead for Team Liquid, and it is also a best out of three, guys. It was supposed to be a best out of five, but Team Liquid is actually playing in the defense after the series completes and the schedule for 21 CT, so unfortunately, we only have our deciding game three, but it's still been a great series so far. I'm really glad we've seen these two teams playing against each other. And now Fnatic bustling down this tower. This really feels like the end for Liquid. I mean, there's not even a Radiance finish on the Spirit Beer, but don't need to be. And, and really, it just forces Team Liquid's hand. I mean, they have to jump in with that clock, but when a clock jump in under level, under item like this, he just is a feat. Uh, Boba, it's not like he's playing bad, it's just... He just doesn't have the item. Yeah, to it play was the late. I mean, yeah. Lifestealer just does really well against Clock 1v1. They thought Here we go. Team Stone is out, and they're gonna go on... Air fly, Fly, taking a lot of damage. Is he gonna go down? Yes, he does. Here we go, Phantasm gonna be used on TC. Who are they gonna focus next for Team Liquid? Uh, they did get just a free kill. Wisp dies, and he's gonna rebuy, and that should be it. So trading one for one right there, and it looks like pretty good trace so far. I mean, they're defending their base. Yeah, they didn't kill either, either of the carries. They only killed the Venom Man, so they did force a buyback out on the Wisp. So overall, a, sl a pretty even trade, maybe a slight victory for Fnatic. But with the tower down, really what Fnatic should do is just siege, and they're being a little over-eager, I feel, with these dives. Well, let's see if they'll play a little more patient. You, what you could do, something that YYF said, there was actually an interesting v Vici gaming game in uh, G League where they had an advantage, but they just couldn't end the game against LGD. And what YYF said was, well, just siege with the Lifestealer Rage in an interview. Go in for three seconds, whack on the ranks, then walk back out with that six second range. You can do it. When you've loaned Druid and Lifestealer, just siege the base. You don't have to commit your carries. There's nothing Liquid can do against the bear. I mean, you're not going to reality rift Cast Bolt and then kill off the bear because if you do, you have no way to deal with Lifestealer. Stealer. So they could siege this. They're trying to force the fight, which is not the right way to play it. Here comes uh, the relocate bottom lane. Yep, and they see Fly, and Fly is dead. So I guess if you can find that one target to keep on picking him off repeatedly, well, there's some way to earn TC some gold. TC going for that BKB. When if you're if you're uh, Chaos Knight skipping the drums to go BKB rush and hasn't had it in 23 minutes, you know you're not having a good game. They did remove Fly, and that's going to make it a five before. Team fight mid, but and not too sure whether that's enough. Again, there's no need for Fnatic to bum rush in. They could use that bear. They could use a rage on, on life stealer. But here comes Boba with those cogs. <laughs> well, Arrow wanted to do exactly that. Cogs are the answer, apparently. Granted, he used them before the creep wave. Radiance is up, and there's no mech, there's no might, and there's a squishy wisp, so that Radiance burn is really gonna hurt. This should be an easy rax for Fnatic, but let's see what happens, and here we go. Lift available, here we go, they're gonna use it right now, CK's trying to run in, but with that Tombstone alive, they really can't do too much. Glyph is out right there, I do believe they're gonna lose a melee rax for sure, and let's see if Team Liquid wants to take a fight after that Tombstone is back, back out, but Fnatic, very smartly, they they will they should back off after that Rax. No, they want to take a fight right now. They see the opening, and Boba drops off a cog. He gets bounced on the other side. TC gets rooted. He's done. Well, he gets disrupted right now. Boba's dead. Fluff is dead. Team Liquid is just on a meltdown right now. Multiple buyback here. Triple. Entire Team Liquid team buyback. It looks like they're going to get try at least get a couple more kills. Can they do so right now? Tomb is down. Everybody's very, very low. They do disrupt one person oh, no. and they do cog on top of him right now but it's no tail he gets this rubbing out he has a ghost scepter he is so tanky and they're still gonna get endless amount of kills finally the undying does die but era is gonna just really do a lot more damage actually disruption here on the ck staying a longer and longer life he's gonna try to run back honey comes in eats a three seconds on us bear somehow team liquid is still alive fluff and his team's fighting on but it's just not gonna be enough Liquid gets absolutely creamed by Fnatic in game two. It is actually one to one, guys. Again, this is a mistake, this little green dot right here. So we now go to the deciding game three. And Liquid just really outlaned by an out sort of drafted by, not drafted, but just the laning decisions were vastly superior for Fnatic. And the fact that Liquid had to make like three or four adjustments. Well, if you're the team that has to, you know, make the adjustments, you're generally the team that's going to fall really far behind. Nice performance from Fn uh, from Fnatic in this game number two. Yep, GG gets called. Boba just going for some like revenge cogs right now. <laughs> Fortunately, no no such luck. Game three is gonna be coming up, and the winner will be going home with five hundred dollar in the BTS Weekend Cup. And yeah, it's it's pretty decent money for playing two best out of threes. I gotta say, so whoever wins this will be very happy. It's single elimination, so to be as fair as possible, it's only gonna be that first place team that gets the money. And let's see who it's going to be. 
Uh, we're gonna head into game three with the series all Dyer's tied up one to one. Um, I'm actually feeling like Liquid, the Wisp is just really kind of at odds with the Visage pick. When you pick the Wisp, yeah. it's a defense, it's a hero that needs levels. Uh, and then the Visage, it's a hero that you pick to dominate the lane and run an aggressive tri lane. So these two, not really the best partners, I feel. It will work if they win that lane, but they didn't, so it, it, it didn't work. It's hard to win that lane. And yeah. also they made the adjustment. You wonder, maybe they should have just left the three down there, but then Fnatic, when they rotated the supports in, there was no choice. Liquid had to move. So guys, that wraps up game number two. Series is tied one to one. I'm LD. He's Luminous. Follow him on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube.com slash Luminous Inverse. Stay tuned. More action coming up, guys. It's a weekend full of tangos. We're about to wrap up our BTS Weekend Cup in this deciding game three. But we're not done yet after that. We have the thrilling and long-awaited live conclusion of a fistful of tangos. And I also want to mention, for those who haven't already heard, we're moving to LA. We're building a studio there. And Lumi's going to be doing some work with us as well. So there'll be lots of Davids in the house. We are running a Kickstarter through Indiegogo.com to promote that. We already reached our goal in one day. Our goal was $25,000. So now we've set a new goal, a stretch goal. Gods has posted some information about that on Reddit, on Team Liquid. We'll talk more about it after this best out of three. But stay tuned because the deciding game three between Fnatic and Team Liquid is coming up next. I can't mess up this score count because the series is tied one-to-one, -one, guys. I got this.